All right, here we are, our 2005 Moomba Mobius LSV. Ski and wakeboard boat for sale. We're here on the beautiful fresh waters of Norris Lake, Tennessee. There is a boat mate uh, matching single axle trailer that is included with this one. And it just had new tires uh, put on it last season. You've got, uh, and it's also got a spare tire. So you've got basically uh, three tires. So I believe the date code on them were uh, towards the end of 2020. And this one is ready to go. This is, here's to have been a freshwater boat its entire life. It came to Norris Lake via uh, Michigan, as far as uh, at least what paperwork trail we have on it. And this one's rated right for, rated right for 10. It's a 20 feet, maybe it's a 20 feet, um, eight inch length overall. You can see we've got basically got the newer style uh, foam covered swim platform. We're here for our video walkthrough tour as always. You can find the current asking price of this one as well as the full list of specifications, features, and options all at our website which is www.yournewboat.com. Now for your convenience we will have a direct link to this listing at our website down in the video description. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you want to find out more on it, all you got to do is look in that video description. It's going to be a link down there. You can either click on it or copy and paste it into your web browser. It's going to take you right to the page uh, on this one at our website where you'll see a whole bunch of photographs of it. We'll kind of do the same thing that as we do on the walkthrough tours. We'll basically Go all around the exterior, through the interior, show you the engine room, the propeller, and then we're going to kind of get up close and personal and show you any wear and tear that we noticed. If you are interested in this one, stick around all the way through the tour uh, towards the end of it. So when we'll start going into uh, to any wear and tear. Uh, while I'm here on the swim platform, here is a uh, swim platform stereo remote. That's a Rockford Fosgate stereo unit. We've got six cockpit speakers and two JL audio tower speakers. It's an amplifier as well as a 10 inch Rockford Fosgate subwoofer. We've got a uh, tower mount bimini top. We've got two tower mount weightboard racks one on either side. Anchor light and there's your uh, ski tow hook up there. You only want to pull up Skiers and tubers up there. Do not want to pull, uh, I'm sorry, you only want to pull skiers and boarders off the tower. You do not want to pull tubers off the tower. That can uh, provide more stress on the tower than what it was intended for. Uh, now, if you're pulling any towables or people on tubes, you want to utilize this ski tow pylon right here. This is, this is meant um, to pull towables. You can also pull skiers there if they prefer. Uh, just a little tip, if you're pulling younger skiers and you're teaching them to ski, um, I recommend using that tower because that's gonna kind of lift them up out of the water a little bit more so and not so much just being drugged through the water with them having to do the, do the, um, the getting up. So that, that can sometimes be helpful for some of the younger guys and girls. All right, so here at our driver's seat, we do have a flip-up driver bolster seat. Um, and then while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. We've got basically a little bit of uh, imprint on the hardware for just this flip-up bolster seat. And that's because, especially on these um, inboard boats, um, people just tend to just leave these bolsters up. So just from just from having the weight of that pushing down on that cushion, it's kind of left a little imprint there. Um, there is a little mark right here on the, uh, the backrest. I think that's just a stain on that one. A little mark right in there. So I'm going to point that out to you while we're here. And we do have a tilt steering wheel. We've got a um, trim adjustment plate on this one right here. And this is your um, your trim lever right here. Um, we've basically function tested everything on this one. You've got three uh, ballast bags. 
and both your uh, your fill and your empty for all three of those appeared to power up just fine uh, this is going to show you that adjustment on that on that little trim plate that uh, Moomba calls the weight plate it's going to show you where that's at this one is rated for 10 there's your capacity plate right there um, and then you've got a driver Rockford Fosgate stereo remote you've got a fuel gauge engine water temperature gauge there's two speedometers on here um, you basically get two uh, two pickups, one on the port, one on the starboard side. That's why there's two speedometers here. And those, those do tend to get clogged from time to time, so that's why the factories would put two of these on here. Um, engine hours on this one is currently showing um, 471.4 engine hours. Um, we're probably going to round that up, call it uh, call 472, maybe even round it up a little bit more, maybe 475, because I know the seller... Does intend to uh, continue using this one up until the point that it is sold. Um, oil pressure gauge, battery voltmeter. You have a 12 volt power outlet right here, and then um, of course I've already called your attention that tilt steering wheel. We also uh, check the uh, navigation lights. We've got uh, operational running lights at the bow. Step back here, and then here's your anchor light right here. Now this would this is basically just on a little little mount right here. And that would just get flipped up whenever you're using it instead of being in that down stowed away position. Uh, bilge pump is functional. Blower is functional. And then we have function test at the stereo and all the speakers. And those all appear to power up just fine. Um, we also have a working horn. And let's see, where to next? We do have a uh, rear view mirror attached to the uh, windshield frame there. We've got a small in-floor ski locker. Now this is also where uh, your center ballast bag is. That's gonna be laying down in here. Um, this one right here. These are uh, wake maker uh, ballast bags. And then here's that Rockford Fosgate uh, stereo head unit. Another 12 volt uh, power adapter right here. And uh, this is a AM FM. USB, auxiliary input, satellite ready, Pandora, Bluetooth stereo, and what did I forget? Just about everything on there. AM, FM, um, oh, and it's got the uh, the NOAA weather band as well, where you can kind of get weather alerts. Um, you can see this power up right here. So there's your, um, it's on your tuner there now. Here, I'll just scan through here. There's your, um, again, satellite. Pandora, Bluetooth, Auxiliary, USB. There's that NOAA weather band, AM, and then FM. So you've got all those, and you can even control the zone separately. You have a uh, basic one zone, are all six of your cockpit speakers. So we've got two here, along with two cup holders. We got two more over here on the port side, along with four cup holders. And then we've got two up in the bow, along with two more cup holders. That 10 inch subwoofer is right there on the way to the bow. And then your, your other zone is for your two tower speakers, uh, your JL audio tower speakers up here. So that, that's actually nice because a lot of times if you're, if you're pulling a rider, they might want the, uh, the music a little bit louder so they can hear it when they're riding. And having those separate zones will allow you to turn up your tower speakers without blasting out everybody that's actually in the boat. Um, now just behind this seat here, we've got dual batteries. Both those basically have a uh, shut off switch and then we've got a, uh, your stereo amplifier. It's just, just behind here, that is a JL Audio um, 800 watt marine um, amplifier. And then of course there's some of your, uh, your auxiliary um, input hookups right there. There should be a USB jack down there as well. It's all coming off basically the back of that um, stereo head unit. So it's going to close there. Now while, while I'm here, there's a small little uh, self-draining cooler right here. That just, happen, uh, just happens to be where they kind of put all their tie-up ropes. Uh, we've got two, um, two cup holders down there at your driver's foot. Uh, I've already raised this center hatch for you here. Let me go ahead and head through this walkthrough, show you your bow seating. You've got storage under these seats. Um, anchor is staying with this one. Your anchor and some rope is stored under here. Otherwise, there are uh, person belongings, water toys, life jackets, and things like that are going to be excluded from this one. This seller, this one is planning on getting. 
another boat in there. And they're also hanging on to the slip here. But again, there is a single axle trailer included with this one. Um, and if you're trying to be on the North Lake area, there is some limited availability just currently. Don't know how long that's going to last. But there is some uh, limited availability for a handful of uh, smaller boat uh, runabout slips right now in certain areas of the lake. Um, so again, now uh, these personal life vests are going to be excluded. Uh, this is um, the second one of those three ballast bags. These were all uh, new, more recently replaced. These are uh, weight maker. Here we go. These are the weight makers universal fit ballast bags. So you've got one here in the port side corner. Now you've also got a mooring cover. That's what's laying here. Um, then again, you've got those um, personal life vests. They're arguing to be excluded. And then your third tank is right down there. Here is our engine hatch. Here is our Inmar Assault. This is a uh, V8 inboard V drive um, engine. I'll have the horsepower rating on this one, but again, um, I think it's somewhere around uh, 300 horsepower. I want to say three, three, somewhere between 300 and about 330 horsepower. I think is what this Inmar Assault is rated for. But we'll we'll try to have that listed in the specs of the website. Um, and again, we're going to probably uh, round this up to at least uh, 475 hours on this one. So that's, uh, that's just going to about do it for the interior here. So before I leave the interior, we're going to go ahead and start calling your attention to any of that wear and tear that we've noticed on the interior. Thought I saw a little mark in the vinyl there. We got a small little scuff here, but it's not a tear. Um, now this seat here where this uh, self-draining cooler was, this one is the worst of your upholstery. And that's basically just where this corner has gotten rubbed. Um, looks like the cooler is the uh, the most frequently used cushion here in the cockpit um, and, and yeah so you've got wear on that corner there other corner on it feels fine um, this so this uh, center seat right here this can be slid forward it's actually it can be slid farther than that or even removed uh, this is not on a track but uh, basically they um, this is basically a little service um, hatch that they put here just this is so you can access uh, the front of that transmission. Now here's your uh, your ballast pumps. Um, your V drives is going to be just on the other side of that. There's another one of the uh, pumps right there. Slap that back into place. So some people, you know, if you're in and out of the boat a lot, some people I'd, I've seen will take that all the way out. And they'll they'll kind of position it somewhere else so that people can um, can have kind of a seat while you're facing more of the rear of the boat. If you are doing a lot of uh, uh, riding and, and pulling uh, borders and skiers and things like that. So it's uh, storage under that one as well, as long as this other corner. And there was a small little mark up here where your windshield basically lays down. Now, this is um, intended to kind of keep that windshield frame off the boat, but it has made a little mark right in here. Generally speaking, you want to try to ride with your uh, with your windshield closed and not uh, not in that open position because that's what it can do we do have some nice uh, flip up little pleats and upholstery uh, otherwise up here in the bow look fine a little bit of staining on the back of these uh, but really nothing uh, nothing major a bit of a staining in here and that also seems to be a stain I thought it was a tear at first but it is not all right And then we do have um, this little mark right here on this passenger seat. Another little small little tear on that upholstery. Otherwise, um, and then of course I called your attention here on that driver's seat as well earlier. Um, a little scuff over here on this side near this seat back. And then a little bit of a uh, more of a scuff over here on this side. But uh, none of that outer layer is... Um, at least the uh, the outer layer is not ripped at all. It's just a just a little bit of a scuff mark on there. Maybe a little bit of a um, hole on there, like a pin size hole on there, maybe. It's 
so that's gonna do it for the interior wear and tear um, now here where I'm standing now oh here it is right actually right exactly where I was standing a little bit of a mark on uh, part of this platform covering and it looks like about it now there there is some oxidation on the uh, on the transom here and that's kind of in this black right here so uh, generally speaking when these are in a slip like this um, it's it's the back third of the boat's going to get the most of that uh, that UV light and so it's it's not uncommon to have oxidation back here now some um, some real uh, professional buffing and waxing and you'll probably get rid of some of that along with some dock rash that's on here and uh, that's that's what we're gonna have a uh, have a look at now so bear with me here as I climb off I'm gonna show you our uh, our prop in that weight plate uh, just underneath your uh, swim platform here so there's that four blade that is a uh, four blade bronze propeller I believe that is a Acme brand and um, here's that weight plate Go to plugs in it. Um, and then again, this is where we're gonna be seeing some of that oxidation. Um, now this black is is really gonna show um, show a lot of uh, water spots and, um, and marks in it. Not all of them are my marks. Now this spot right here, that is one that's just barely through that gel coat layer. Okay, a few little kind of surface scratches there. Now we do have some dock rash kind of throughout this one and you know some a diff, some different colors hulls and uh, it may not even be as noticeable but now in this black they do tend to kind of show you a lot of this um, now some of this can disappear with a uh, like i said a really good professional buffing and waxing uh, but these these kind of white lines these generally they're just catching a little bit of an edge these generally are, are not going anywhere um, as in after this is buffed and waxed, you're still going to see that. Now some of this, a uh, little bit of like white cloudiness to this, um, that's what will go away with a really good detailing, is a little bit of that kind of white cloudiness. Um, there's definitely a little bit more of a water line in a few areas, and it's, it's uh, more visible in some areas of the boat. That's the part that's going to uh, kind of disappear when you do a buff and wax, but any of this... Uh, um, that's just some dirt right there. You can kind of see even just rubbing my fingernail in there. It's kind of getting rid of a lot of that. But um, these little lines right in here, this is kind of what we're referring to. It's a little bit of a dock rash that's that's not going to, it's going to be very stubborn to get these um, little white lines to disappear. Buff and wax will take care of some of it, but but not all of it. So again, as I'm moving along here, you kind of see a little bit of chalkiness. That's oxidation. That's the part that'll go away. But all the white lines is more of the dock rash. So now here's a heavier part of that dock rash right in here. Now depending on the uh, the lighting, that may or may not be noticeable. I'm gonna kind of try to move this camera uh, angles um, as we go up and down, just so you can kind of see the. Um, Again, the, the dock rash on here. So it's these white lines. That's the stuff that's not really going to go anywhere. Uh, just the, the little bit more kind of white cloudiness that's in the black. That is the oxidation um, that will disappear. So you can make this black again with the real good professional detailing. Um, you can shine this black back up again. Uh, but the little lines, that's the, uh, that's the oxid, or, uh, those are the kind of the marks of dock rash that are not going to disappear. Uh, a little bit of water spots in here, that will disappear with the, uh, with the detailing and the buffing and waxing. Um, so the, the cloudy uh, hue to it um, and the little water spots, those will disappear. Again, it's just these kind of white lines. That's more of the dock rash that's uh, not, going to go away oh and then right here as I'm near this tower foot a uh, little bit of a stress crack on that one uh, just a tiny bit here that one that one's definitely a little bit more prevalent right there all right back down to the black here and again I'm just gonna kind of keep moving moving forward trying to adjust this angle a little bit so you can kind of get a feel for the condition of this of this hull line all 
Now here's some of that water line that I talked about earlier. This this is going to disappear actually very easily. Um, bear with me here. I'll show you what I mean. Get my fingers wet just a little bit, and you can kind of see. Now that will come back when it dries, but if you use some cleaning product on there, um, this this whole area where you've got a little bit of white. Kind of on that black, that's actually just a little water line. And, uh, and that part will clean up even without uh, doing a, uh, a buff and wax. Now a few more marks up here above the rub rail. You got a little mark right here. Um, that one right there. That one back down here into the black. And then a few marks on this rub rail as we go farther up towards the bow. And personally, none, none of those marks on the rub rail really ever bother me. That's all cosmetic. You can replace those rub rails um, if you ever did want this to look new again. And then again here, so we're kind of seeing some of that white water spots. Uh, that's all going to clean up with it with the good detailing. Oops, I dip my, uh, dip my foot down the water there. And, and then that's back to, uh, to where I was kind of rubbing some water on there. So it's really not, uh, it looks like that's really just a little spider web right there. Gotta be careful on this black too, because sometimes you'll think there's a, a mark and it's actually just a little um, spider web or something like that. So really, uh, the bulk of that dock rash on this side was right in this area right here. Right along there, a little bit more. I gotta go around a pole here. A little bit more right in this spot right here. All right, I'm going to continue back up to the to the bow. I'll show you down below the water line, and then we'll do the same coming down on the port side. So, a bit of a scratch on the gel coat here. Um, bear with me on that camera movement. Um, I'm not seeing any fiberglass on any of that. You know, again, none of that's really going to concern me. Um, now, if you start seeing fiberglass fibers, then yeah, that's something you want to get repaired. Uh, if any of that bothers you, you can put some sealant on there. Um, some 3M 4000 uh, will seal that up. If, if, if you're going to be leaving this in the water for extended periods, then you, you, you might consider doing that. If you're going to be keeping it on a lift or on the trailer, um, there's really no need to even go through. That. So again, um, here on this rub rail, we've got a few marks along this, just the port side now where we're at. And looks like that's probably come out of that track just a little bit. They put some screws in there to keep that insert um, held in place. All right, bear with me here. We're gonna keep hanging off the, uh, the side of this lift and uh, um, slip frame. And again, so this, now this a little bit more heavy white area that's that water line that's going to go play uh, that's going to go away with just a clean um now sometimes that'll come back but once you do uh, get this detailed get some good uh, wax on there it's going to disappear all together um got a few little marks up here in your decaling that was just maybe barely through that gel coat um that's one right there and oh here's those air, other areas i was looking for that i saw earlier we'll also try to have photographs of this as well um not seeing any stress cracks around the tower feet on this side except for this rear one uh almost the same as the other side and then we'll mark in your rub rail here and then i'm going to drop back down below the rub rail and here's where we've got some more of that, more of that dock rash starting about right here. Take that camera angle up and down for you. Continuing on. Move that camera angle up and down so you can see those kind of white marks against kind of those fine um, white lines. That's that's going to be the dock rash. It's going to be a little bit more stubborn to uh, to go away. Well, really, it's not going to go away. But again, kind of that uh, cloudiness in that black hull side that will disappear uh, with the detailing now here's this is probably the worst of the dock rash 
on either side of the boat starting about right here i think i've already shown you that but i wanted to go back and then we'll keep keep moving back towards the swim platform or the stern of the boat and there's where we got some of that dark rash I don't really think any of that happened here in this slip. This was probably all done by either previous owner um, or in another slip. There's that LSV decal for the Mumba Mobius LSV. Small little crack in that gel coat there. Thought there was two other spots there, but that ended up just being some dirt. Yeah, let me come right back around that corner here. Bear with me. I study myself. Um, maybe a little bit more dock rise just right in there. And again, and now we're back to that transom pretty much where we started. So again, um, that, that kind of white cloudiness will disappear. And um, those water lines and water spots, all that's going to disappear. And it's just, just these little white lines that we're looking for that's that dark rash that won't disappear but definitely that side was the worst of it um honestly really uh none of it really bothers me in my opinion um at least it wouldn't if, uh, if i was buying the boat anyway so that's gonna uh, start to wrap things up for us here today again this is the 2005 moomba mobius lsv wake and ski boat for sale again here on the beautiful fresh waters of North Lake, Tennessee. Single axle trailer with new tires and a spare tire are all included with this one. Slip is not transferable, but if you do need something, feel free to reach out to us where there are, like I said, there are a few limited options um, here in the North Lake area as of the time of us taking this, uh, shooting this video. Again, reach out to us with any questions. Public service announcement is uh, when you call us, if you do not get um, us to answer, you get a voicemail and you would like a return phone call, keep in mind that we are very frequently in areas without cell phone reception. So if you don't leave a message, we will not know that you called. If you do one better, if you leave us a detailed message, let us know which listing you're looking at, what questions you have. As soon as we get back into cell phone range, we'll return that call, answer all those questions for you. Um, if you've sent us an email and it's been a business day you have not gotten an email reply please check your spam folder we're very quick about replying to our emails and uh, just about always we're actually getting back uh, to people on emails within probably about uh, six hours maybe 12 hours max if it's during a business day depending on where we're at in the lake but we will reply uh, just check your spam folder if you have not seen that reply you can also um, all of our contact information will be at the website again there's going to be a direct link down in the video description for your convenience um, all you gotta do is click on that link. You'll see our number in which you can call us or text us. Um, and, and you can also send us an email through the website. And I thank you again for joining us. Again, this is the 2005 Moomba Mobius LSV with the trailer included for sale here on the beautiful fresh waters of North Lake, Tennessee. That yournewboat.com logo that's popping up in the top right hand corner of the screen. It's just a shortcut to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, we're always happy to have you as a, as a subscriber. And I thank you again for joining us.